Times Radio. Now, fertility rates have reached a record low in England and Wales. That's from the Office of National Statistics. Melinda Mills is the Professor of Demography and the Director of the Leverhulme Centre for Demographic Science at Oxford University. Hello to you, Melinda. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. It's, it's a pretty dramatic headline, just in itself, the lowest birth rate ever in Britain. Yeah, so it's the lowest birth rate in 80 years. So I can imagine why people see it as very dramatic. But there's actually, if we put it into comparison, there's been countries such as Italy and Spain that have been dropping to lower rates for many years, even lower than that. Um, and also, if we think about South Korea and East Asian countries, they're at 0.7. You know, so these are so there's been a, a general shift to lower mm. fertility in many different countries over time. And it's not just lower uh, total fertility rates; it's also shifts to later ages. So you know, what was striking today was that um, for for men, uh, excuse me, for men, um, it was 33.8, which was was pretty striking for average age of childbirth. And for women, it was um, almost 31 years. Yes. And, and, and the, well, this fall off in the birth rate, it presents serious problems, long term problems uh, to, to many of the countries you mentioned there. I'm talking about the the, the, the the reduction in the working population and aging population that needs more support. It's building up to something of a crisis, isn't it? Or is that putting it too strongly? Well, it depends on the country. So South Korea is definitely seeing it as a crisis. They're throwing billions at it at the moment, and they're doing a lot of pronatalist policies, and none of them seem to be working. So, And you have countries such as uh, Hungary that you might have seen. So they're at uh, a total fertility rate of 1.52. They're putting 5% of their GDP towards pronatalist policies. Again, it doesn't seem to be really working. So some countries are in a panic about this. Mm. The UK, if we look at its population growth rate, uh, the ONS published uh, earlier this month that it was 1%. So the population is still growing. So you have to think about life expectancy. As you said, people are living longer. But also there's been immigration into the UK. So the population levels are actually sustained. Yes. Well, let, let's look at what's going on here. I mean, a lot of things are going on here. But for one thing, Melinda women choosing to pursue their careers that in their younger years that's a significant factor yeah, so there's lots of things going on. One is that women are going into entering into higher education and going into employment and they're staying into employment too. So that's that's a, one of the largest shifts. But you've got other things going on too. You've got things such as um, precarious employment. People aren't sure about their jobs, sort of long-term jobs um, and how much money they're going to make. Housing is a really key issue here as well too. So people need this sort of long-term horizon. They need to find a partner they need housing. They need a good job. And that uncertainty has been shown historically for hundreds of years to really influence, you know, people will postpone. And if they postpone, then we get into them having children into periods where they're biologically less able to conceive. So you yeah. get into a whole bunch of other range of issues as well. Does anyone have any, any, any use, useful idea of a policy solution to the problem? Well, there's a few things. Um, this probably isn't that welcome, but gender equality <laughs> would work um, in some way. So that's that men and women take care of uh, children. So um, we've seen that actually in some of the Scandinavian countries, um, if, if, you know, paternity leave, so men also taking time off and staying with children, if that's, uh, you know, uh, they receive money, but there's also sort of social and cultural norms that it's acceptable to do, mm. then you can uh, boost child child rates or fertility rates. And also just things like uh, ability to combine work with family and housing. I, I keep coming back to housing. It's really important. Throwing money at it and benefits at it has been shown not to really work. So, right. you know, it's more of a structural issue and a cultural issue. It, it does underline the need for migrant workers, doesn't it? In, in so many economies, although that has become increasingly tense in politics. Well, you have this huge discussion now. So how are you going to have people in the NHS, uh, you know, uh, healthcare uh, sector? How are you going to keep, you know, so the people that have been coming in. So remember that the UK had this very large um, increase in immigration in 2022 and for the last years. But most of those are working in the healthcare sector. And as well, there's a proportion as well coming to study. Those are all people of childbearing ages. So you have to think if we have this aging population, there has to be a solution. It's got to be fertility. It's got to be migration. It's got to be something or it's got to be a way to think about how are we going to change old age uh, care and social yes. care. So these are all sort of connected, interconnected issues that we need to consider. All right, Melinda, good to talk to you. Thank you. Melinda Mills there from Oxford University.